good day, um, students. I am a professor Stella Ojebode, the Department of Agricultural Extension and Rural Development. I'm the primary study focuses on gender and dimensional issues uh, in agriculture and rural development. I was the last uh, director of gender discipline office at the University of Bali. This course is introducing gender and development issues. It is a compulsory course for every student, and I would like you to pay attention to this course. So the title of the course, as you can see, is Introduction to Gender and Development Issues. And uh, this course, uh, this part of the lecture will come up at the, the, the 12th week, sometimes might be. 11th week or 13th week. But for now, we're going to have introduction to gender issues and then we're going to talk about understanding sexual harassment in the workplace. Now, we need to introduce you to basic gender issues. What are these basic gender issues that we need to introduce you to in this course? Contemporary importance of gender issues in development issues, level of sensitivity to and integration of gender issues needs for gender mainstreaming in development and stages in gender mainstreaming in teaching and research and benefits and problems in different gender mainstreaming strategies. We also need to let you know the requirement for mainstreaming gender issues in developmental processes. So we are going to talk about gender socialization in Nigeria, basic concept on gender, gender equity policy of the University of Ibadan. You know this is the University of Ibadan. And there's a need for you to know that we have a gender policy which every student should be familiar with. We will also let you know the sexual harassment issues uh, in the workplace, like in the University of Ibadan, and the need for mentorship, which is an important aspect of gender and uh, development studies. So, under this gender uh, sexual harassment uh, in the workplace, we want you to know the definition of sexual harassment, sexual, uh, sexual harassment behavior, strategies to prevent and eliminate sexual harassment, what to do when sexual harassment really occurs, and remedies for sexual harassment as we have in the United States of sexual harassment. So the issue on gender and development, uh, we should you should know that gender and development issues have become very topical at this time and very, very important. You know, not only in Nigeria, globally, they have become a major issue in development cooperation involving people. You know, where you have people, both male and female, it is necessary for us to study gender and development issues. Uh, the development of any country, as you know, should involve a holistic socioeconomic analysis that addresses gender relations to fully understand the situation. And the, the issue helps to ensure that policy and its directives promote equality, you know. So we need to know this in this course. Any project or policy will always have an effect on people, and such projects must work to promote equal status of both women and men. So for development to be very successful, such development must involve gender by dimensions from the beginning of the process to the end of such process. So gender relationships are very important determinants for the differential situations, constraints, potentials of males and females, as well as the opportunities for improving their conditions uh, and their livelihoods. So this has led to greater att attention being paid to gender analysis. Uh, we can get this from Olawo in 1997. The textbook, it's one of the textbooks that we recommended to you all to go back to read. So the attempt to achieve gender equality has been a very major developmental goal for several years. In most cases, it has fallen short of the desired result of males and females having the same opportunities to advance socially, physically, educationally, and economically. So from the beginning, the empirical evidence, it is evident 
and apparent that gender differences need to be mainstreamed into development policy analysis. So I will divide gender in this course as a cross-cutting issue relevant to every discipline. When it is put into practical application, it is very, very relevant. So a great process has been made, or a great progress has been made in the area of gender sensitization over the last two decades or even three decades in Nigeria. Part of this course that we are really working on will discuss basic concepts that you need to know as students on gender and some developmental issues, you know, sexual harassment in the environment. All of this we have to put, put all together in this course for you to be able to understand it well as we are just coming into the university. In most organizations, low level of training and limited access to resources to a particular group not only hamper people's quality of life, but limits productivity. And this also hinders efficiency and growth. So it is necessary to promote and improve the status of women to be able to pursue reasons for equality and social justice and good development practice. Investment in both genders is crucial, as, as from what I have said, in order to achieve organizational goals and development. You must have so gender uh, equity has gained strong momentum globally. Therefore, it's a map of institutional advancement in higher education and has been accepted as this cross cutting issue in every sector, from health and education to employment, production, and technology. Gender issue is very imperative for fuller understanding of social dynamics from international to household level. So we look at levels of sensitivity to and integration of gender issues in most disciplines. Proportion of gender sensitive individuals is still very low. You understand, you can agree with me. The proportion of female staff and students in various organizations is increasing daily, even yearly. So bringing need for greater gender awareness gender equity. There is the need for us to know more about it. And then you also know that not all females are gender sensitive, nor are all males insensitive. So gender sensitivity in teaching is not limited to number of males and females in classrooms. Do you agree with that? Content of message and mode of delivery are also equally very important. So research that ignores gender issues neglects a crucial issue. Need for gender mainstreaming in development process. Gender mainstreaming, uh, as, as I want to define, is an attempt to deal with some of the deeply entrenched gender-related hierarchies that dominate most organizations. Don't forget, you mentioned about this organization, and that's why it's important for you to know this. So this process requires a number of changes in policies and procedures, as well as the culture and persons in, in those organizations, especially for university-based teaching and research. It includes what is focused upon in class and factors considered in research studies and the understanding of gender issues by academicians. So we can define gender mainstreaming as a strategy for making women's and men's concerns and experiences an integral dimension in the design, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation of policies and programs in all political, economic, and social space such so that inequality between men and women is not perpetuated. What are the stages involved in mainstreaming gender in teaching and research? I want, to go, I want you to listen attentively to this because we are involved with teaching 
and research and even supervision in the university. And University of Ifubado is one. So the stages are, are stated as I will come up with them below. Sharing information with colleagues to gain wider acceptability of uh, 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 and implementation. Another stage is preliminary sensitization of staff to gender issues in general, academic and non-academic staff and students. Application of gender issues to teaching and research activities of specific disciplines. Experimentation with integrating gender into the curriculum and research agenda of different disciplines and faculties. Review of experiences and progress towards gender mainstreaming. And then sharing information with colleagues to gain wider acceptability and implementation. Review of curriculum for specific disciplines or programs at all levels. That means at uh, undergraduate and postgraduate levels. So you, you check on the screen what gender mainstreaming is. What does it mean? We have a gender mainstream office in the University of Ibadan. And I want you to know what this means, what gender mainstreaming is. From the table, you see that uh, what gender mainstreaming tries to achieve and then we have what gender mainstreaming does not try to achieve. Now, gender mainstreaming tries to achieve one, attempts to apply gender principles to specific issues, such as curriculum and our research topics. Gender mainstreaming also tries to, achieve, to enhance quality and relevance of existing teaching and research, and also discovers ways of integrating gender into development issues such as teaching and learning, just as we are in this class. What does, uh, what gender mainstream does not try to achieve include not just another basic gender awareness. We are not just talking about, oh, you want to know me, for me, you know. No, that's not what it is. It's not just another curriculum review and not an exercise to develop a checklist of courses and research topics that includes gender issues. It's also not just about women. Many people think well, gender is not it's just about women, or what are they talking about? Is it about women again? No. Gender is not all about women. Now, what are the benefits and problems with different gender mainstreaming strategies in development process? By now, you should be able to know what gender is, as I, I defined it up there. But we want to look at the benefits and problems with different gender mainstreaming strategies in development process. And one of such is people become sensitized to gender and its significance to the discipline. You know, by the time we get to take you through gender mainstreaming, you are able to know gender and the importance of such two different disciplines, whether uh, medical sciences, uh, arts and all of that, whichever course you need to know and be sensitized to what it is and the importance of such. Then there is better incorporation of uh, gender into various developmental issues. This may not logically flow into, you know, with the rest of the program or the course. Then less importance may be attached to gender. Then integrating gender into existing courses programs may not be very feasible for all courses, but we give a better view of how gender can be mainstreamed. This is very, very important to you. So the basic requirement for mainstreaming gender into development process uh, are listed below, and I want you to take a, a particular attention to this, pay attention. Mainstreaming gender should encourage participation of all stakeholders in the development process. All stakeholders, everyone that is involved, whether you are a teacher, whether you are a student, whether you are working for the university, whoever you are, you must encourage participation of everyone. Be, commit, be committed to the goal of gender mainstream. Everybody must be committed. You must be committed. If you are a student in the class, you must know that both male and female can answer questions, both male and female can use any space, 
both men and female can sit anywhere. Not that males have to sit in front and the other ones at the back. No. Equal participation. There must be follow through from rhetoric to practice. And then we must educate people about gender and how it applies to their own area of hospitals. You know, if you are uh, a, a nurse, you should know that both male and female have equal rights at any point in time. Even if you want to go for nursing, both male and female, they have equal rights to, 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 to register as a nurse. Now, gender socialization in Nigeria, I want you to know this too, especially we are in Nigeria, and we need to know why gender socialization is important. You know, gender roles are constructed through a gradual, timely, and orderly socialization process. This is what we are doing. So the entrenchment of these roles is achieved through social interaction with a number of agents of socialization throughout one's lifetime. You are all in the classroom now. The school is, is, is an institution, and it's, a, it's one of the areas where we socialize. In the early period of an individual's development, the mother and the maternal figures, as well as the father, and maybe later siblings, they play an important role in the formative period. It becomes important or significant as an individual develops or grows. Other persons in significant positions also become relevant. For instance, in a particular house where we have male, female, you know, in the morning you expect the mom to be in the kitchen to cook, the ladies are helping the mom, or you, you see the lady is expected that in, maybe in our culture in Nigeria you expect that you, you sweep the floor while the male will be helping the father either to kick the car, to warm the car, to fix the box and all of that. We are at both male and female could actually do this. So there is a need for gender socialization. Schoolmates, teachers, religious leaders, and other children in one's area, they have impact on the development of such a personality and perceptions of his or her role as a person. Whether you are a male or female, it is no matter. A female can change the bulb if the bulb is born in the house, not necessarily the male gender. So the influence of the mother and father is also very important and significant too in, our social, in gender socialization in Nigeria. And the mother provides the role model for her daughters while the father demonstrates what it means to be a man to his, his, his sons. So it is good to encourage socially acceptable gender behavior. A mother may prevent her son from carrying out female tasks, such as sweeping. She may also scold daughter who is so aggressive or not interested in cooking. So various authors have said a lot of things. They have advised on the dangers of the way children are gender stereotyped in their upbringing. You know, there shouldn't be any discrimination. If a male can be the one to sweep the house, try to do normal thing, you know, cook for the, for, for the household. It does not really mean that male gen, the female gender will have to do that. Girls are advised to be gentle and settle for playing with dolls in the, you know, when they are young. And boys are allowed to fight or play rough games. Some children may be forced to behave in ways that are not you know, natural to, to them. So some girls even have been socialized to believe in ways that certain professions, such as medicine, and engineering are for males. This is not true. Why females should go into nursing, teaching, and you know, being involved in sectarian work? These are gender stereotypes. Gender stereotypes are breaking down somewhat, but there is need for gender sensitization of parents and teachers who have a significant role to play in the early development on what is considered appropriate for males and females in the society. So in Nigeria, now let's look at gender responsibilities in a household and community in Nigeria. I want you to pay attention, and I don't want you to go through this course by looking at it and you know, listening alone. I want you to put into practice. You know, in Nigeria, let's look at gender responsibilities in household and community in Nigeria. There is division of household and community tasks and responsibilities by gender and generation, you will agree. Social Sciences and Reproductive Health Research Network derived from a study on male responsibility carried out in three zones in Nigeria. Certain commonalities in gender division of responsibility, some 
variations they were identified among various households and now let's look at the main household tasks you know this includes provision for the family maintenance maintaining of house walls and roofs removal of cobwebs fetching of firewood payment of school fees digging of wells payment of bills ironing of clothes buying and bringing of food for the house or for the home while female household tasks include cooking sweeping of the floor bathing of small children fetching of firewood and water washing of dishes grinding of pepper nursing of babies cutting of vegetables laying of beds processing of agricultural products and caring for and caring for small livestock in the household you see among male community tasks includes settling of this disputes you know maybe as a male you expect that once you're in the community you, you will be involved with settling of disputes between two people or between groups of people payment of taxes and levies attendance of community meetings naming of babies dredging of quarters while female community tasks include cooking and ceremonies sweeping of markets cleaning of town hall uh, visiting of the uh, sick singing and dancing at ceremonies drying cocoa and other agricultural products so there are variations in gender relationships and responsibilities by social cultural groups in this course too, we want you to know some basic gender concepts like sex sometimes when you ask differentiate between sex and gender many of you don't know you think it's the same you know they don't mean the same what is sex sex refers to generic and physical sexual identity of being a male or a female and these attributes are biological they are universal and enduring why sex also refers to the biological and physiological characteristics that define men and women. You can say that it is the physiological state of being a male or a female. You see that a female will have breasts. Now these days we have the cross gender. But right now, you know, differentiating between sex and gender, we can say it's the biological and physiological characteristics that define men and women. Gender refers to ways in which society and culture apportion characteristics, requirements and expectations to males and females. What are gender rules? These are clusters of socially or culturally defined or learned expectations about how male or female members of the society will behave in specific situations. For instance, in, uh, among the Yorubas, they will expect that, based on their culture, when you wake up in the morning, it is expected that you greet your dad or mom by prostrating if you are a male, while if you are a female, you kneel down and greet the elderly. This may not be the same in other cultures. Gender means to me, it is the process of assessing the implications for women and men of planned action, including legislation, policies, or programmers in any area and at all levels. That is, it includes gender-specific activities and affirmative action. Whenever women or men are in particular disadvantaged position, you know, we mainstream gender by allowing equal participation of both male and female. We also have gender-specific interventions, which can target women exclusively. Men and women together, or even men, to enable them to participate in and benefit equally from development efforts. So there are necessary temporary measures designed to combat the direct and indirect consequences of past discriminations. We also have affirmative action. This refers to a principle which describes the measures to redress the imbalance imposed by centuries of discrimination against women. This can be in form of intervention projects 
or come up with new procedure or process. But all we want to do is to make sure that both male and female are allowed to participate equally. We also have gender equality. Gender equality means that both sexes have equal rights. They have equal freedom. They have equal conditions and opportunities for realizing their full potential and for contributing to and benefiting from economic, social, cultural, and political development. Another term is gender inequality. Gender inequality is the obvious or hidden disparities between or among individuals due to sex. Gender dynamics, it involves relationships and interactions between and among boys, girls, women, and men. Yeah, we have gender stereotypes. I think we talked about, I have talked about that initially. This is a rigid and oversimplified definition of a group of people in which all members of the group are labeled with similar characteristics. We have such a lot in Nigeria. You see, you want to generalize all women are, all men are a stereotype. It does not matter. You see, sometimes too, when a male is talking, and then the male is talking, then they say, oh, why are you talking like a woman? If a woman, a man is driving in front of you, and a woman, the woman is driving, and they say, oh, why are you driving like a man? Let this man drive. And the one that is driving is a man. So this stereotype needs to be taken care of in the society. We also have women empowerment. It implies an expansion in women's ability to make stra strategic life choices in a context where this ability was previously denied them. So it means giving women the tools or equipping them with knowledge, skills, capacity to participate in decision making and access to power. That's the, uh, women empowerment. That, that they need sometimes to empower women, allow them to contest. Maybe you want to be the president or the coordinator of your class, the class governor and all of that. You can use different ways to encourage them to participate so that the leadership quality could be built you know, inside of them. We have gender analysis, which is a systematic way of looking at the different impacts of development, policies, programs, and legislation on women and men that entails first and foremost collecting sex disaggregated data and gender sensitive information about the population concerned. We have many basic type, type, terms in gender. We have gender gap, the difference in the scores between men and women. You know, we want to see the differences in the scores between the male and the female, you know, on their attitude, it could involve the interest, behavior, knowledge, perspective on particular issues such as access to education, achievement, provision of welfare facilities, and voting preferences. We also have discrimination, gender discrimination, which refers to biases, prejudices, intolerance that people suffer from on account of their sex, you know, race, social status, religion, health condition, or related factors. We also have gender blindness. What does it mean for someone to be gender blind? It is a conscious development of objectives, plan and program, in an organization or institution, we know efforts to recognize or incorporate gender issues that might influence the functioning of that organization. So the production of plans, the implementation of programs, and the outcomes of such programs. We also have gender violence. This is an act that results in, or is likely to result in physical, sexual, or psychological harm or suffering to men or women. I want you to take note of these basic terms because they occur daily and that's what you, you will be faced on a daily basis. We must be sensitive. We have another term, gender sensitivity, which means the translation of gender awareness into practices. It results in changes in the perception, plans, and activities of institutions and organizations. Then we have gender awareness, which is the consciousness and recognition by all players in an organization or institution. University, for example, uh, of, of Ibadan is an, is an example. 
the importance of gender and its effects on the objectives, plans, and programs. This is why we are going through this course for you, for you to be aware, and for you to be familiar with global goals in, in the university. We have gender budgeting. This is the examination of all expenditure from a gender perspective. You can say uh, you get so still, or even in the University of Bernard, for instance, all the all ladies, how many guest hostels do we have? How many male hostels do we have? Is there a balance? Do they have enough toilets? Let's go, you know, through faculties. How many toilets do we have for male and female? You know, that is, that is gender budgeting. Then we also have institutional culture, which is the clearly identified organizational approach to handle issues. There must be an institutional culture. The policy of the University of Bradham, which we, we, we tried to put up some years ago, uh, the, the policy was put up based on the culture of the university. This university is the premier university, the first and the best university, and you should count yourself lucky to be part of it. There are some universities that are just uh, for a particular profession. For instance, you can say uh, University of Education. You know, in that way, you have only people trained for, you know, for them to be able to teach other university or other students or other uh, people from different areas. Uh, so, when we are, when such university is going to put up a gender policy, they must look at the institutional culture, what the university stands for. We also have gender equity. It involves fairness in representation, participation, benefits afforded to male and female. You know, sometimes you have some of these uh, grants and they, they encourage women to, 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 to apply, you know, such a thing. That is, they don't want women to see such a grant that is being announced as being meant for only males, you know. So that's equity. Fairness. There should be fairness in representation, in participation, uh, and then benefits afforded to both male and uh, female. We have gender misogyny in, 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 in the University of Bernard gender policy. And that's why I, just, I will run you through this gender policy we have in the University of Bernard. So that you know, by the time you go through your other levels, you will be conscious of what we have. And the gender policy of the University of Bernard is committed to maintaining a gender-sensitive environment. It is reflected in the University Act that states that the university is to encourage the advancement of learning throughout Nigeria to hold out to all persons without uh, distinctions of race, creed, or sex, the opportunity of a, a liberal education. And so over the years now, enrollment of females has increased considerably in the University of Ibadan, especially in the arts, education, law, and dentistry, but not in the science-based disciplines, where it has remained at like 30% in the last decade. You know, that was in 20. 10, or before the policy was put into place. So gender disaggregate data of staff shows approximately 80% of academic staff, more than 50% of senior academic administrative staff, and 60% of junior staff are male. And so special highlights of the gender scenario are the emergence of two female registrars in a row one female deputy vice chancellor academic between 2004 and 2006, and a growing number of female deans and heads of departments. All these appointments and elections have generally happened without any special university affirmative action policy in place. And so, until the approval of the gender policy, the university had no institutional mechanisms in place for the promotion of gender equity. So there is gender disparity in the composition of the decision-making organs of the university, including the student union. So in the core mandate of the university, there is limited attention to gender. And so the university curriculum is not engendered in any conscious way, although there are departments which offer a few courses in this area. So in some research in the, like in the social sciences, humanities, law, education, agriculture, a gender perspective is adopted, especially in those funded by international agencies alone. So the gender policy now was put up, and so it is a statement of the University of Biden to commit itself to initiating steps to apply a gender lens 
to all aspects of his suppressions on a routine basis by making it the norm for females and males to share resources, power, on a fair basis, and redress any previous imbalances on a just and equitable basis. So we now have a gender policy that we put up and was approved by Senate, and now it is in operation. In this way, the institution is strengthening itself by utilizing all available human resources for its core activities of teaching, research, and service. It will commit resources to eliminate gender violence, discrimination, and injustice. So the gender policy of the rights of Bano now that we have declares the position of the university on gender issues as part of its vision, mission, and core business. The, the, the policy prepares guidelines for educating and responding to gender issues as they arise in the institution and influencing the surrounding community at the, uh, and in the society at large. I'm sure we are going to give you the gender policy. Uh, maybe when you get to your different department, we give you what it is and all of that. You can read through it. We also have it on the United States website. You could go to it and then you go to gender, mainstream office, you see the gender policy and what it stands for. The, 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 the gender po the positive of gender equity is strongly embedded within the framework of the fundamental human rights and gender justice. You know, the Nigerian national gender policy derives from international conventions to which Nigeria is a signatory. It affirms to this too. So the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria of 1999 prohibits discrimination on the grounds of gender. You know, and so Investment in both genders are now recognized as crucial to achieving sustainable development. So every member of the community is regarded as having the potential to contribute to the development of this institution. So you too, either you are a male or female in this class, you have every right to contribute to the development of the university. Some of you may become the class governors later, either you are a male or female. And so it is also realized that in all societies, low levels of education and training, poor health and nutritional status, limited access to resources by a particular group, not only hamper those citizens' quality of life, but it limits productivity. And so in that economic efficiency and growth. So gender equity is increasingly prioritized as an indicator of development in the rest of the and global acceptance in networks of higher education. So the quality and effectiveness of an institution is in part judged by its gender sensitivity at the global level. You know, gender is key to problem solving. The integration of gender in program planning and implementation is critical to solving institutional and societal problems. The same thing is happening in the rest of Ibadan. The Nigerian National Gender Policy affirms a commitment to gender mainstreaming as a development approach and states that all policies shall take into consideration gender implications and strategies while promoting human rights, justice, and equity. So if you are here, lucky to be admitted to the University of Ibadan, get ready to participate in every area of our programs in the university. So the gender policy ensures that the dignity and integrity of both women and men are equally respected and valued. I want you to take note of this very, 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 very critically. Opportunities to advance and develop. You have the opportunity as a student to advance and develop. What in decisive and creative ways to guarantee that women and men have the same rights. You have the same rights, you know, in the university. It also ensures that gender equity is integrated into institutional strategic plan. If you look at the strategic plan of the United States government, we give both male and female equal opportunities in policy development, operational practices, procedures, you know, they are all informed by equality of opportunity. So our, uh, our, another aim of our gender policy is to optimally serve the interests of both sexes in studies, research, training, supervision, and development activities. So 
So it is important for you to take notes. And then uh, uh, in, our, in our policy, we just introduced the issue of mentorship because the policy was reviewed uh, a few years, two years ago, and uh, we make mentorship an important aspect of gender and development issues. What is mentorship? This can be defined as involving activities, relationships in career and guidance, support, personal and physiological, and social aspect of building an individual by a mentor. So by the time you, you enter the university, begin to look for a mentor. Who is this that can mentor me? You know? Mentorship can be defined as the activity of giving a younger or less experienced help and advice over a period of time at work or in school. And it's a relationship in which a more experienced or more knowledgeable person helps to guide a less experienced or less knowledgeable person. So you should begin to look at who can be my mentor, you know? I'm not saying that you should look for a male who will be your boyfriend or man friend. It's not allowed in the university of Ubadu. Look for someone who can give you good advice someone who can lead you, so that you'll be able to succeed academically at the end of your tenure. A mentor may be older or younger than the person being mentored. It can be defined as a professional relationship in which an experienced person is in developing specific skills and knowledge that will enhance the less experienced person professional and personal growth. So there is a need for formal mentor training and effective mentoring in higher institutions since it is critical it is a critical component in the success of any training institution for the new faculty and mid faculty training women and girls are still under represented in many science subjects and engineering fields hence mentoring and role modeling are critical advice the knowledge resources that a mentor shares depend on the format and goals of a specific mentoring relationship. So mentorship involves guidance, motivation, emotional support, and role modeling. It provides individual recognition and encouragement, constructive criticism, and informal feedback, advice on balancing teaching, research, committee work, and other responsibilities training and inside information on the department, the university, knowledge of the formal and informal rules for advancement, knowledge of the procedure of the university, advice on scholarship, teaching, and reduction of stress. So you need to begin to look for someone who, can, who will be identified as your mentor, who will be able to give you good ideas before you finish your, in your different uh, faculties or departments. What are the benefits of mentoring? The benefit of mentoring to the mentor includes satisfaction in assisting in the development of a colleague, in ideas for and feedback, and collaboration about the mentor's teaching and scholarship. So it helps in building a network of colleagues. For higher education, mentoring helps to increase commitment, productivity, and satisfaction of people. It helps to encourage cooperation among colleagues and helps to improve uh, improves communication and personal skills and help to develop leadership and management qualities. Therefore, it reinforces personal studies, skills, and knowledge of subject matter, and increases confidence and motivation, which makes individuals to engage in voluntary opportunities, thereby enhancing their profile. There are many challenges to mentoring. It can lead mentors to use mentoring relationship to help with their own needs and recognition to the expense of mentee success and development. It could also lead to over-dependence, competition, and unbalanced mentoring relationship. It could lead to misconception of mentees' potential. It could actually lead to hesitation by mentees to express their needs because of the fear of professional repercussions. It could lead to unclear understanding of the role of a mentor, leading to lack of commitment to the relationship, and could lead to mentors taking undue advantage of the mentor's research interest. And so, there is a need to enhance mentoring experience in higher institutions 
that could, uh, could be achieved by encouraging students to write what he or she would like to achieve through mentoring relationship without any fear or anxiety. So I want to encourage you all to identify a mentor as you continue with your studies and uh, you look at you know good qualities of, from a particular person before that person becomes your mentor. What are the qualities of a good mentor? A, ment a good mentor must be available. If the you are looking at is not available, that person might not be a potential mentor for you. He or she must be in a position to help establish a professional network among students and staff. You should be prepared to support both staff and students. That person should be ready to help you, uh, explain certain things to you, guide you uh, as to uh, what it takes to have a first class, you know, and be the best students that you ought to be in the university. So that the mentor should deal with discussions in confidence. Someone that you can go to, to talk to, and that person will provide guidance and then give you constructive criticisms without telling other people. You know, somebody you can confide in. You know, so such so person should be able to advise mentees on criteria for promotion. Introduce to both staff and students other colleagues that could be potential mentors, source of for sources of research funds. Some person should be able to tell you you could re, uh, access this fund to help your studies and all of that. Ready to solve staff and student problems and you'll be able to prov provide solutions to your problems. So the aims of a mentor should be sorting out priorities to be achieved in teaching, learning and supervision, be ready to give advice on academic offenses and familiarize uh, with university environment. Then we should be free to share personal experiences with you, you know. Such a person should be ready to listen to you anytime and ask questions. If such a person is not ready, then that person is not a good or a potential mentor. He or she must maintain and respect privacy, honesty, and integrity. So I want to conclude by saying that the direct gender discrimination, which is the olden days, in the olden days, led to gender inequality in this society, usually it's, it's mostly eradicated. There are basic conditions and mechanisms, me mechanisms that are not actually conspicuous nowadays in the society and in, in institutions that are responsible for segregating or and stereotypes, leading to stereotypes at all levels. So the design, formulation, implementation, monitoring and evaluation of efficient and effective gender policy in higher education will definitely pro provide solution to the problems of gender mainstreaming into the development process. So in the event of that, we all, just as we have the gender policy, we have the sexual harassment policy. I will just run through it briefly before we conclude this class. Um, in the event of that, we, we have the gender policy and uh, the of course you know that the constitution of Nigeria, 1999 constitution, prohibits discrimination on the ground of gender and it guarantees the right to human dignity. So sexual harassment is a violation of the privacy and dignity of a person guaranteed by the Nigerian constitution. It poses serious problems and serious concerns for the Nigerian labor and educational system because it threatens the well-being of entire institutions. It distracts from the employer's efforts to provide a conducive working environment. And it weakens the dignity of the victim as well as the perpetrator and threatens the future potential and career of individuals. I want you to pay attention. You see, in the matter of that, this sexual harassment poses serious concerns for the society at large as I have said, and distract the effort of the society to provide a conducive environment in the workplace. So, it is a, it's a, it's a, sexual harassment is a, one form of gender-based violence. Rape is the worst form of violence, but there are different conducts in, in different ways. So, there's the need to cultivate and maintain a working and learning environment 
that reflects respect for the dignity of all members of this of community, stimulating and supporting an environment free of sexual harassment. The University of Ibadan will not take this kindly is whoever will violate this particular policy. The society should aim at cultivating and maintaining a working and learning environment that respects for that have respect for the dignity of all members of the community, including the University of Ibadan. And the implications and consequences of sexual harassment make it necessary to ensure that everyone in the workplace has the necessary information to prevent and eliminate sexual harassment. There are basically two types of reactions to sexual harassment. The victim may withdraw and become timid or go to the other spectra and become aggressive. So sexual harassment diminishes productivity, you will agree with me. It affects discipline. It promotes mediocrity in a learning environment and can even affect family life. You know, sometimes the harasser may be doing so much that the person that is being harassed will not be able to speak up, will not be able to say it out. And the University of Ibadan will not tolerate such. The United Nations definition targets sexual harassment and it says that such conduct can be humiliating. It may constitute a health and safety problem. So it is discriminatory. So sexual harassment may take place over a period of time. Maybe some of you have even witnessed it or you have been, you know, going through it. You should know that sexual harassment policy is available in the US of Biden and we will not tolerate such harassment for any of our students, may it be male or female. So it may take place over a period of time, may be a single incident, and may or may not involve elements of overt coercion. It may be from a superior to a subordinate or vice versa, or among peers. It can be direct or indirect activity and may involve persons of the same or opposite sex. Take note of this. What is sexual harassment? It is unwarranted sexually motivated conduct, comments, expressions, capable of prejudicing or undermining the person's freedom, rights, and privileges. Unwanted suggestive looks, phone calls, or use of other multimedia formats and comments intended to lure a person into a sexual relationship. That's sexual harassment. Please take note. What constitutes sexual harassment behavior includes, but not limited to this, verbal conduct. If somebody just telling you I love you or maybe I don't love you or you are, look, put, you are looking sexy, you are putting on the sexy so things like that. Visual and audio conduct as well as physical conduct. Visual conduct could be is only sending you a video of someone having sex and all of that or things like that. Illustration of this conduct are described below, so take note. Examples of verbal conduct. Unfriendly remarks with sexual connotations. What are these unfriendly remarks? Come here, oh, you sexy lady. I love you, you know, you are looking at to this thing. Look at your, your, your this, 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 this dress you are putting on today is, is sexy, it's looking sexy, you know, things like that. You know, coercing of females or males to have sexual affairs. It could be someone wanting by you to have sex with him by, by, by force. Demanding for sexual favors in exchange for employment, promotion, or any other benefits. That's an example of verbal conduct. Denying an individual his or her entitlement for refusal to succumb to sexual advances. It could be between you uh, as students, it could be between students and staff. If any of this thing happens, please make your report to the gender mainstreaming office and we take care of it. We don't need your name. We only act on your behalf and stop it and uh, bring the culprit to the book. Sexually motivated bullying or ugling of a, of a person. Somebody is bullying you because of you know, want for sex. Uh, that, that's an example of uh, verbal conduct. It could be sexist and dirty talk directed at someone or persons. Asking personal questions about personal or sexual life. What, what do you think that um, would make you feel sexy? Things like that. Uh, I love you. Uh, can you 
uh, come and sit in my front, give sit on my lap, things like that. You know, those verbal conduct are not allowed in the University of Ibadan. Targeting a person with sexual comments, you know. A sexual comment about a person's clothing, your body, or your shape. Oh, look at this, your body today. You look, you, this is figure eight, you know. Uh, you touch the bum bum, you touch this and that, you know. Those things are not really allowed. Turning occupational discussions into sexual discussions. Compelling persons to narrate sexual fantasy, preferences, or history. Have you enjoyed sex before? How do you feel when you have fun? You know, things like that are not allowed. Unsolicited, sexually explicit, or suggestive electronic and mobile messages. Like lectures will be going on, and you see someone sending you some messages. I love your breast. I love your tight. I I love your you know your, your look today. You, you know things like that. These are examples. You also have examples of visual and audio conduct. Taking and sending or no some pictures, and making recordings, either video, CDs, camera, phones, and things like that for the purpose of blackmail or any other purpose. Maybe come come into your room and then you express this, you know, uh, sexual, uh, you know, anything that has to do with sex and then it's recording the thing or movie without you being told. Being forced or induced to watch pornographic or exhibited movies is not allowed. That's an example of visual and audio conduct. Seductive postures and indecent dressing and exposure by males or females. You come into the lecturer's room or office and you open your breast, you use, you know, or you wear a saggy uh, trouser showing your buttocks, your, to your tummy, and all of that. Those are examples. Examples of phys physical conduct, non consensual sex, attempt to engage in non consensual sexual intercourse, assault or battery. Maybe someone beating his wife or the wife beating the husband, you know. That's an example of physical conduct. Such report could be made to the gender mainstream office and we will not go, we will not overlook it. We take action. Unwelcome and unwarranted brushing against a person's body. Maybe as you are entering your classroom, somebody is brushing against your breast or a man is brushing against a woman's breast or the woman is brushing against the man's uh, uh, breast or whatever. You know, or walk or welcome care, uh, caressing or fondling. Somebody just, you know, touching your mouth is looking, you know, maybe a guy touching the mouth or the, uh, or a lady, you know, uh, going uh, touching the mustard of a man and, you know, for the purpose of sex. That's uh, harassment. What are the strategies to prevent and eliminate sexual harassment? We put up some strategies in our sexual harassment policy book for us to be able to read through and take note. Why publicity of the university organizational norms, the values and principles, including respect for all persons. If you go through your book, your student handbook, you see all of those there. In inclusion in the staff, student and other organizational handbooks, the institution's position on sexual harassment, we have it in black and white in our sexual policy document. Development, publication, and circulation of the university's organization sexual harassment policy. We have it there. Organization of periodic orientation and reorientation programs. We have this for our new students every year. We have orientation program for, for them in the university and different, different faculties too and departments also usually organize orientation program. And uh, that, that issue of sexual harassment is mentioned too. Establishment of victim support and counseling centers in appropriate academic student affairs and health centers within the institution. Yes, we have Jaja Clinic. Sometimes we send some of our students there for counseling, or, or you want to uh, you want the victim to, to, to be addressed by the health officials, the social workers. We have it in the University of Ibadan. Handling of sexual harassment complaints with natural justice, transparency, and timeliness. We don't waste time. Once you make your report to the office, we, we, we act promptly. We don't really waste time. And the perpetrators are really uh, put the book. 
provision of adequate human and material resources to the office uh, for complaint and uh, uh, report of complaint and grievances. grievances. Uh, once you are faced with sexual harassment, anyhow, if you make your report to the, uh, the, 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 the general mainstreaming office that is located at the Student Affairs Building, we give you a form to fill, we give you a code, we know you don't need your name, and then we follow up from there. What is your role on sexual harassment? You are just coming into the university. What are the roles you need to put up in sexual harassment in case it happens? First thing is prevention and elimination of sexual harassment in any community. It requires concerted effort from all members of the community organizations. And so every one of you, all of you in this class, you should not be a perpetrator of sexual harassment. Or sexual harassment. You should not be caught. You should not be found wanting. You should not condone sexual harassment. There will be zero tolerance for sexual harassment in the University of Ibadan. You should not tolerate it. Report any sexual harassment as they come, as you are aware of. Either you are involved, you are not. Whether or not you are the victim, report immediately to the gender mystery. You could actually send uh, a text message to the gender. I mean, we have our hotel lines which are made available, and then you send to the gender mystery office. If you cannot confidently to report, make suggestions on how to improve the sexual harassment environment on campus. So you can come up with your suggestions. We will be glad to have it. What to do when sexual harassment occurs? When sexual harassment occurs, what do you do? You must know that sexual harassment are, have implications, not only for the victim of the unacceptable conduct, but also on the safety and learning culture of the rest of Ibadan. An institution must not only have a clear policy, but the members of the community must know what to do when such incidences occur in order to institute and maintain a safe and secure learning space for all. Please pay attention. What to do when sexual harassment occurs, the institution therefore needs to adopt clear complaint and investigation procedures and provide appropriate disciplinary measures for perpetrators and remedies for victims. The decision, the decision to make a formal or informal complaint, that is, the receiving officer shall however make a record of the complaint, it lies with the victim or anyone who advocates on his or her behalf or a witness. So if a person observes a sexual harassment behavior, even if she is not the object of the same, a report can still be made to the, to the authorized body. So if someone tells another of sexual harassment activity by any member of the university, the latter can also make a report so that such persons can be investigated. A formal complaint must be in writing, signed and submitted to the place. Take note, I've told you that if you sign or sum submit such a complaint, we will not look for you because we are, not, we are not interested in your name. We only want to act on what information you have provided to the office. Sexual alignment complaints should be handled with natural justice, transparency, and timeliness. So we want to, we want to be prompt in our action. So I want you to feel free to report such a thing to the office. On receipt of a report from a victim or witness, the officer in charge shall immediately initiate steps directed at investigating the true facts and nature of the matter under consideration. And the investigating officer has the authority to invite for questioning, for comments, clarifications, opinions, and any person considered relevant for the purpose of facilitating the investigation and offering appropriate redress in the matter. What are the remedies now for sexual harassment? I want you to take note. For the rest of the burden, officers responsible for implementing the provisions of an institution's sexual harassment policy shall ordinarily exercise discretionary powers. That is, they are to adopt reasonable measures in response to specific reports or complaints. So our policy in the University of Ibadan provides that, in, that universities shall ensure 
that all processes and procedures related to the implementation of sexual harassment policy are corrective and not punitive. The penalties for those found to have violated the, the sexual harassment policy may include, but will not be limited to any of the following. Monitoring, it's part of what we do, counseling, and or therapy. Written warning or reprimand, transfer from the unit or department where possible, oral admonition we give to students and staff, probation, you know, suspension without pay, demotion of such staff, removal from administrative duties. If you know such a person is proving, you know, very difficult in the university, we can remove you from your administrative duty so that you will not uh, harass our students anymore. Expulsion, you could expel. Dismissal or any other disciplinary action which the institution may deem fit. So, the UI policy on sexual harassment was passed by Senate on the, on the, on the, uh, in August 2012. The policy is binding on all members of the university community, and the policy applies not just to your staff, it involves both male and, uh, teaching and non-teaching staff, and all students, but also to all contractors of the university, and service providers to the university, all visitors to the university, and all other groups of persons of the, to the university, including but not limited to children, works, and other dependents of staff and students. In other words, maybe you have a, a, a house girls, you know, trying to harass your children at home and things like that. We take note of that, we take action. We had cases of cab, cab drivers driving uh, our students to the hostess and then they, 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 they harass them. And the cases were reported and we took, we took, we took serious action. So, I want to encourage you, Paul, as a new student in the university, to take note of these two policy documents that we have, the sexual harassment policy document and the uh, gender policy of the University of Ibadan. I want to welcome you to the university, and I wish you a very, very prosperous stay in the university. And I want to encourage you to always make your complaints to general mainstream office of the university because if you keep quiet you may not be able to achieve your aim but if you speak up speak out we'll be able to help you and we'll be able you will be able to complete successfully i thank you for listening to this lecture and i wish you well in the university of Ibadan. thank you